If you guys have watched the channel for a reasonable amount of time, you guys know that Andrew Garfield is one of my favorite actors of all time. I think he's just brilliant. He's super versatile. Um, and this movie definitely helps prove that, um, like, quite a lot. So I was really excited to get to watch it. Uh, and my boss lent this to me, and he's like, hey, watch this. And I said, okay, bet, I will. And then I did. So today, we're going to be talking about Under the Silver Lake. Under the Silver Lake was released in 2018. It was written and directed by David Robert Mitchell. No spoilers. I'm just not realizing this has to be a non-spoiler review and that's so complicated. Okay, essentially, Andrew Garfield, who plays Sam, finds this girl that he finds attractive and they meet. And then all of a sudden she disappears and is led to believe that she is dead. So he ends up picking up all these clues through the media that he's consuming that lead him to believe that it is some kind of conspiracy theory. That's all I can talk about because this movie is heavily spoiled. This movie, this is gonna be a short review because I can't talk about like any of the film. Um, I can talk about the performances, which uh, Riley Cough was really, really good. Um, I think she was better than in Zola in this film. I didn't really like Zola a whole lot and I don't think her performance was particularly fantastic, but it was pretty good. But it was even better here, although she had much less screen time. Uh, and Andrew Garfield's fantastic in this. It really does show that he can play something cool. It, like, in my opinion, this is probably the first Andrew Garfield movie where he plays Andrew Garfield, where he's just this weird, whimsical, kind of crazy character, right? And then you see him kind of develop in that kind of character, like Tick, Tick, Boom, is very much, it is the most Andrew garfield -y of Andrew Garfield films, unless you want to consider mainstream, which I guess I do consider to be the most Andrew Garfield, garfield film, um, but that movie was bad, so I don't like to talk about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was really solid in this film. And a lot of the media clues are really, really cool. The way that it's like it's like a detective movie, basically. Um, and I liked how they introduced a lot of them and, and it made sense. Um, the end of the film kind of lacked for me, in my opinion. It just kind of fell flat. Um, although I kind of think it falls flat uh, with a good reason, but I can't talk about it. Um, but yeah, it definitely works you through the movie a lot, which is nice. Uh, this is another one of those movies where they need to do that. But then the moments when they don't kind of suck, it's like, oh... He understands something that I just, I don't understand. And that's kind of the issue with dramatic irony is that we have to know more than the character does in order to fully understand the movie. It's this weird balance between like, obviously we know what's happening both on Earth and on Titan when we're watching Infinity War, but the other characters have no clue what's going on. So we have a better understanding of the story than the characters does. But in this movie, there's a lot of moments where you feel, okay, wow, Andrew Garfield knows what's going on and we have no flippin' clue. And that's fine, except that it makes the movie very unrelatable and it definitely drags the tension down a lot. But it was a good movie nonetheless. I really did enjoy it. I think it was really cool. I do want to own this at some point. Um, and I like the detective movie part of it, like the kind of weird sci-fi kind of stuff it had uh, towards the end um, that I can't talk about because of course I can't. Um, I want to wrap it up here because I can't talk about this film much more without spoiling anything. And I really don't want to spoil anything because it's really cool to like define it on yourself, like by yourself. There is potential for a sequel. I There's also potential for the idea that this movie has media clues within itself that I have not decoded myself. Uh, and I will do it at some point probably. If I get a second chance to watch it, I will look for those kind of clues. But I'm gonna go ahead and give Under the Silver Lake a B plus. Have you guys seen Under the Silver Lake? Let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought about it. Um, I had a good time watching, it's really, really cool. Um, it's still not my favorite A24 film so far. If I had to pick a favorite off the top of my head, I'd probably choose um, The Killing of a Sacred Deer. It's probably my favorite one so far. Um, but yeah, uh, those are all the movies that my boss has lended me so far. Um, I do want to watch The Witch on my own time. I want to watch Pig on my own time. And I want to watch The King on Netflix. So I'm going to be doing those kind of sprinkled out through here um, between now and the end of the year. So we'll see when I have time for that. Um, next... I don't know when, I don't know when it will be it is, but the week of December 25th leading up to that I'm gonna be doing a bunch of Christmas classics that I have on Steelbook so I'm gonna be doing those if you're interested in Christmas classics you know those old like Tim Burton-esque kind of films so I'm gonna watch those today so I'm excited about it because I love those kind of films so definitely consider subscribing if you don't want to miss any of that and show up on December 31st when we do an eight hour long live stream event uh, it's a variety show kind of thing to celebrate 200 subscribers so subscribe and then come visit me then uh, it's gonna be a whole lot of fun one to nine Eastern Standard Time don't miss it I'm really excited. So I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, keep watching movies and television. Stay educated. And I'll see you guys in the next. Video.